All right, so welcome to the next episode of the Coaching Couch podcast. This is the third unlost episode, or the fourth if you count the lost episode. Um, and today's topic is going to be experiments. Hi there, Kitty. Hey, good evening. From uh, Spain this time. Nice. You're yes. on vacation in Spain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just arrived today, so sorry if I look messed up. Uh, but it's okay. I feel lovely. <laughs> yeah, we started this podcast in the way that we think that any product should be started small and cheap and without putting in too much effort into, you know, buying big expensive lights and hiring a hairdresser or anything. Um, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> no. no. We should eat our own dog food. And uh, as, as coaches, we, we preach that you should get your stuff out there uh, as fast as you can and as, uh, as cheaply as you can to see if there's an audience and to get feedback. And as much as I am shy to do that, because I am camera shy, no matter what this looks like online, um, we decided to do that. And uh, the way in which we make our clients learn is by experiments. So this whole podcast probably is an experiment and experiments is the topic of today. Yeah. I spent some time and yep. No, no, no I just keep talking. Yeah, good. <laughs> Do that until the bomb explodes. Yeah. Uh, I've spent some time thinking about experiments because um, I'm currently studying psychology, like at snail space, but I am. And obviously, they uh, want us to know everything about what is a scientific experiment and like how you're supposed to know exactly which variable you're changing and what you're measuring and um, how to control all the um, other factors that might impact the outcome of your experiment that might be unintentional. And it made me wonder a lot if there's actually a difference between the experiments that I make people do at work or the way that I use the expression experiment and the experiments that uh, people in science are talking about. And in science, you have a theory that you want to prove and you figure out a way where you can control as much as you can control and then you just have this one variable which you change whatever some people drink a coke before they run 100 meters and some people drink a sprite before they run 100 meters and then you figure out if that changes something and um i think it is different okay, because, it is. Yeah. yeah it is because of uh just the behavior of people so having in the, I think in more of the controlled experiments, we have the variables um, which are controllable in some sort. But I think in human behavior, um, you know, you, you can have your point of view in advance that some things will be the same, but once you change the slightest thing, everything will change and also in the future. So it's, um, you cannot do the exact experiment um, again with the same people because they've changed because of the previous one, but neither with different people because they respond yeah. differently uh, or their, their outline is, is different to begin with anyway. So I think there is a difference. Nonetheless, yeah. I think both have to do with, okay, uh, you want to go somewhere, you have some sort of... A, the thing that you want to validate, which is uncertain yet, and you want to have some more certainty on, uh, on the outcome. Uh, and I think that's why mostly you do experiments, at mm -hmm. least when I look for, mm -hmm. for myself. That makes it hard to argue, though, is, is mm -hmm. what popped to my mind. Um, you know, as coaches, we might have seen more than one organization, more than one team. And for some things, you know, you're fairly certain that a certain um, change will likely have a positive effect. Mm -hmm. And you get people to run an experiment to see if that's the case for them. And it's very hard to tell people, hey, I've run this experiment before and it worked fine the 70 times that I did that. Mm -hmm. Because as you said, um, just because it worked 70 times does not mean that for this particular team and organization, it will work again. Mm -hmm. So uh, the argument that can and should be made probably a lot is that um, yeah this applies like outside of our organization but not to us because 
and that is a that that is a lot of, uh what i hear a lot is like yeah that's what you learn in theory but to us it doesn't apply because we're so special yes because that's what every everybody is thinking and in in some ways it's true uh, but nonetheless, I think the, the best learning also for, for our clients is, um, or at least the people I, I work with, is that you go through the process of dealing with uncertainty and how you cope as a team or as an individual uh, with these uncertainties. And when you frame something as, okay, let's try this as an experiment, then uh, I think the... the I don't know, the stigma of failing or now we've done this before. Yeah, but the context is different now. So you might want to try again. Um, it kind of helps them over the, over some sort of a threshold. Um, yes. And, and not always have the, the right to say, uh, yeah, we, we tried this before. It doesn't work with us. Um, okay, but have you tried doing this and this in this context? No, because every context is different. Yes, I think it helps people to, uh, or it helps us to get buy-in from people. Yeah. Like it's not a decision that's forever. It's an experiment and it has a defined end date, at which point we're going to evaluate whether we're actually, we've actually improved and it actually did help or not. Yeah. And, and I think it helps to um, label something an experiment to get the buy-in, but then also you have to live up to that promise. Mm -hmm. and to actually do evaluate and, and, and do be honest about whether it really worked in this context and to be honest about it if it didn't. Yeah, well, and especially about, um, okay, how do we know that this experiment uh, was successful or, or failed uh, for the same matter? So yes. it also gets them to think about, and, and ourselves as well, um, think about more of, okay, what is that we want out of this? and have a deeper think about that before you just go about and do something and we'll see where it end, ends up no just think ahead okay what is the result that i want to that i want to obtain and this is experiment a way to get there uh, maybe so maybe not mm -hmm. um, let's try this for a short period of time and then see if it works yes or no uh, and maybe it will partially and maybe it, it won't and we need to change uh, other variables or I don't know, a whole different thing. Yeah, uh, um, and that's where it ties back in with a scientific method um, where you're, you're kind of not allowed to just gather data and then once you have the data, go like, oh, here's what I found. Look, I have a theory to back up my data. Is uh -huh. it, no, you have, it works the other way yeah, around. Right. You, have, yeah. you have to make the theory first and to say, okay, I predict or the theory would predict that if I change this variable, if I change this setup or whatever it is, then I would expect this other variable, which I am measuring, to change in this or that direction, or to change at all. And that in, in, in involves um, being very clear about what you expect the outcome of the experiment to be. Yeah. And maybe that is something that, thinking of it, maybe I am not too, um, not too concrete about. You know, so sometimes uh, you have a. Uh, something that you want to change with your teams and you think it's for the better and you have uh, a reason why you know you have some dysfunction that uh -huh. is around in a team or something that's not working which is a reason for uh, running an experiment and then i just noticed that maybe i am a bit vague about what i want the outcome of uh of the experiment to be the outcome a lot of times is does the team want to keep doing the things the, way, the old way or do they want to keep the keep things the new way after the experiment uh -huh. and are you deliberate deliberate about that to the team that you're oh. vague about it or not no it's just something that i noticed i don't okay. think it's necessarily bad because if the team thinks mm -hmm. no it's better that way that is a way of measuring mm -hmm. um i don't know if we've talked about this uh during our episode about goals um, about SMART goals, uh -huh. um, where the SMART acronym um, says that goals need to be M measurable. And to me, a lot of people struggle with that because they think that a goal such as uh, let's be a better team, let's have a better team spirit. How do you measure that? 
like spirits per inch or spirit, spirits oh. per, per square inch. I don't know. Um, and and, and people, I, people struggle with defining a goal for that. And you can, you can make any goal easily measurable by just having the team um, say on a scale of zero to 10, what do you think we're at now? And yeah. after running the experiment, you ask him again, and, and there mm -hmm. goes your measurement. And yeah. I think that's a very valid measurement and maybe to a certain degree, the most accurate measurement because your gut feeling tells you a lot more than more concrete KPIs. Mm -hmm. And so... Well, I think anything is measurable as long as you have a, a shared definition. You know, yes. you can measure love for all that matters. You can have a yeah. vague term as possible and, and still make it measurable. Yeah, by using a, a scale question, scaling question. Yeah. 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 And yeah, some things are more quantifiable, uh, let's say, but it yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be to, to make it measurable. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, but it, it should be, um, you, should, you should measure at the end of the experiment. To some, yes, to and, some also, and also before you start, I think. Oh, yeah. To, oh, yeah. to have some sort of a baseline and then uh, reflect upon that after having done the experiment. Mm -hmm. Although I think uh, with the coaching uh, uh, work, it's hard um, with experiments because nef nothing afterwards is going to be the same. You, know? you cannot revert what you, what you did or the impact that it made. So you always... Um, have some sort of an impact, uh, which can be worse or it can be better altogether. There's, yeah, there's no way of telling whether it really was your experiment that changed things because you don't have a control group. Like no. this is not a placebo-controlled yeah. exactly. experiment exactly. or anything. It's like yeah. things exactly. are going to change anyway, whether you yeah. run the experiment or not. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's that's the uh, the key differentiator with the scientific experiments where you have a controlled yeah. uh, environment. Yeah. Yeah, and that's something you need to be aware of. And also, um, it can have a lot of side effects that you didn't expect. Mm -hmm. So you, sh you, shouldn't, you should define what you want uh, your experiment to have an impact on um, and, and measure that, but also look out for what else changed that might have been due to us running this experiment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I think in advance, one of the, the important things of when, when running experiments is, is it safe enough to try and see, okay, suppose we do this, uh, make a scenario in, in your mind with, with the group that you're running the experiment with and say, okay, w what's the worst thing that can happen? And, and think about all the, the side effects or the, the unwanted side effects that could happen. Okay, mm -hmm. so how are we going to deal with that? And once that happens, okay, we surely don't want that. Okay, then maybe it's not the time to run the experiment yet. Um, but to at least have a have a deep think about that as well before running uh, yes. the start of the experiment. Yeah, yeah speaking of unwanted side effects. Mm, yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I think the safe enough to try thing is, uh, is very important and is sort of, I think... For some people, like a like a given, um, but it's not that easy. <laughs> I mean, it looks easy, but it's not. Depends a lot on the organization you're a part of. Mm -hmm. Like, is it in the, in this organization in general? Is it safe to fail? Is it safe to try things? Do we need to fly under the radar? How much trust? How much do we trust each other really in running yeah. this experiment? Yeah. Um, and also to not run too many experiments at the same time. At the same time, yeah. Yes. You know, if, I mean, if you're doing Scrum or something where you have a retrospective every week yeah. and you learn that the outcome of a retrospective should be uh, some experiments to improve the process, you might end up with a pile of running experiments that will all uh, interact with each other and you lose track yeah. of all the things that you wanted to do and how you actually measure them. And yeah, and if nice. they enforce each other because they could be tugging on the, on the same uh, part of the rope, which is not very effective, uh, or is, uh, but then takes a pull in a, in a whole different direction. Yeah, it, it can be that they, that they kind of pile up on each other and, and, and make things yeah. move more quickly. But then again, it can also get people very confused, which is actually yeah. something that happened to yeah. me the other day with a team that I'm working with. Uh -huh. um, 
they decided that um, once a week they wanted to have like an extended daily stand-up where they uh, would discuss uh, some additional things. And then um, a couple of weeks later, th they were kind of doing it and not doing it. I was not always there during that daily on that day because of conflicts in my calendar. Um, so they were sort of doing this ish, mm -hmm. uh, having their extended daily stand up. And during one of the next retrospectives, they came up with another um, thing they wanted to try, which was twice a week on Tuesday and Thursday have an extended stand up with like different content. And what happened was that everybody was confused. So, what do we talk about now? So, mm -hmm. is it now? Do we do the daily uh, in the like scrum guide way where everybody says what they did since the last daily and so on? Do we do it in this new way that this one person suggested? And, and are we even DRing the regular daily or are we doing this uh, other topic first? It was, it was a bit of a mess. And mm -hmm. um, that showed me that A, no one really owned um, that, that experiment because if they had, they would have said, no, 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 uh, on, on, on Tuesdays, we already do this and that. And that's uh, like the most important thing that we decided as an experiment. Nobody owned this. They kind of mm -hmm. decided they would do it, but then nobody was like really making it happen. So they didn't even notice when they came up with this second extended daily that they kind of put on top of everything. Yeah. Um, and then it just led to confusion. At least, how, at least that. Did you at least, take them back? Sorry? How did you take them back? So I asked them what they wanted to do. I mm -hmm. said, so, so look, you decided this for, for this and that reason. I mean, I keep uh, um, like, like notes from the retrospectives in, in, yeah. in, in Confluence for the people who weren't there and for, for later reference. And I keep a list of uh, current experiments that we're running. And I could tell them like, look, here's what we discussed. Here's what you said you wanted to do from both of these retrospectives. Mm -hmm. That is your daily. I don't, I don't have um, anything that I make you do during the daily. If you were to say you don't, you no longer wanted to do a daily stand up, I would have a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. But as long as it serves your needs, you can pretty much do whatever you want mm -hmm. during a daily stand up. Um, and, and so let's go back to what did we want out yeah. of these extended dailies? Why did we want them? Mm -hmm. And why did we then not do it? And did they change anything on their experimental level? No, that was uh, last week. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, I, I'm really reflecting a lot on um, how to not make it too guided. I, I mean, I mm -hmm. could go there and just moderate the daily, you know, and call up people and go like, okay, James, it's your turn to say, to answer the three questions. Mm -hmm. um, and now, Jane, it's your turn to answer the same three questions. And now, guys, we're in this and that part of the meeting where we do this and that. I could mm -hmm. do that, but I don't want to. Because no, no. But as, I a, mean, as a coach, I want them to run their own meetings and to own yeah. it so that it, it, in the end, I can, you know, it's, it's stable even after I leave. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. Is but they also own the experiment of doing, uh, I don't know, the extra session either on the, yeah. just the the one day a week or maybe now uh, two times a week already. Um, okay, let's revisit that. Did that work out uh, as a benefit for us? Um, and if no, uh, okay, stop the experiment, see if you need to pivot um, or abort the experiment because most experiments fail, um, which is okay. Yeah. But we wanna see what has an impact and what has not. And if this was not the desired impact, uh then we should stop it and that's okay as well yeah, i mean I think things running thing you you into the fake and then blah, blah 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 and it's somewhere up in the air um that's even more fake i think so yeah yeah i, I think, think that's very important what you what you just said is that most experiments fail yeah and and that is i, I think for, for people listening take a moment to think about that most experiments fail. If your experiments are not failing, if most of your experiments experiment. turn out to be good, you're doing something wrong. You're probably lying to yourself or you're not experimenting hard enough. 
Yeah. Just experimenting on the safe experimenting on the safe stuff. Yeah, I think if you're experimenting on um in the safe zone, um there is something with your alignment not not ready yet. So it's okay if you think it was an experiment, but if most of the experiments are a success, um it's not really an experiment. Um but you have have had it useful to be more aligned on on the vision or the outcome where you want to go in general um, but not as as an experiment at, at least in uh, not in my dictionary but yeah i think that the whole point about an experiment is the, the notion that we do not know yes and, and it, it if you change something with, and you're like i have yeah. no idea how this is going to turn out i mean i think i know that it might be good but the it's chances how you deal that with uncertainty, right? To make yes. uncertainty more clear or more, yeah. yeah. You need to tweak it. You know, it's it's like an experiment is trying to to figure out which direction to go, yeah. and the chances that you'll hit the exact right direction and the exact right amount of whatever it is that you're doing is zero. For practical reasons, it's just zero. So, if your experiments aren't failing. And, and mine and probably yours too, you're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. And probably that's something to, to retrospect on with, with the team also is like, how many of our experiments failed and, and, and why that is a good thing so that mm -hmm. people don't feel bad about, mm -hmm. oh, we have had another experiment and oh, we don't want to do another experiment because it's going to fail anyway. Um, to view an experiment failing as a good thing yeah and and to figure out why it failed like were we off by a little bit or was it com completely the wrong thing to change completely the wrong direction mm -hmm. yeah. for me it has a lot to do with the difference between uh, the comfort zone and the learning zone and oh, yeah. you do experiments in the learning zone uh or even beyond in in the true unknown uh, but to get you know to some learn day um yeah. to mind to to get into the to the learning zone but if you stay too much in your comfort zone then it's more like i said on the alignment and on the things that you already sort of know but maybe should have known and it's not particularly clear yet so it's nice but it's you're not really learning experimental no you're not not learning as you would have uh, by doing experiments yeah there's there's no learning in the comfort zone mm -hmm. yeah so, so I think another uh, another example, at least from my personal uh, point of view, uh, speaking of comfort zone and and learning zone, is I um, I'm taking acting classes uh, oh, wow. acting classes since uh, since this year, um, and there's a lot of improvisation in there, uh, which is also uh, pretty experimental, I must say. It's not the comfort zone. And it's not the comfort zone. It's on some parts it is, but mostly it's totally not, <laughs> uh, which is really, really nice. Uh, I really like personally to be confronted with, uh, with the unknown and, um, you know, figuring out how to deal with it in the moment and with other people and just to have to accept whatever comes uh and and deal with that and uh see how Which you can it's kind of the, the prerequisite of, uh, of improv right so improv mm -hmm. theater is where you can where, where you know that you're going to say yes to whatever happens to whatever and, and you have no clue what happens i mean yes. there, there are no set scenarios you just if you're doing uh like on a uh, with two people you just look at each other and you look and you see how you move or you just respond to whatever the other person is doing and sometimes you you go whatever happens you, you try something and then you'll have to wait until how the other will respond yeah. to either yeah. continue or go another way you have no clue whatsoever you both don't know which is very yes. very interesting and very it takes a lot of courage and trust to to enter such yeah. a such such yeah. a setting you know it's, yeah. it's not everybody might have seen or tried improv theater but this is a a setting where people consciously do this yeah consciously say i'm going somewhere where i have no idea what's going to happen yeah. but no matter what the other person acts out or what scene will end up playing 
I will run with it. I will say yes to everything. And that's, yeah. that takes a lot of courage. Mm -hmm. And certainly it's not everybody's cup of tea and that's, that's fine. You know, no, but it, just to it, say it's yeah. one, one uh, way of doing theater is improv is, 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 is a thing. Um, yeah. and, and if that sounds like nothing you want to do, that is totally fine. Yeah, it is. And it, it's back the the safe zone, which I talked to. Is it safe enough to try? And like you said, indeed, you know, you have to trust these people that you're, you're acting with. Um, and it becomes more comfortable also with people that you don't know uh, oh, really? later on. I mean, you, you learn to get accustomed to the, uh, to the, the feeling that things are unfamiliar. So the level of trust in other people is growing, actually. Uh, at least when I talk for myself. Um, yeah. So you would say you learn to trust more. Uh, you trust, um, how do I phrase this? Um, so did I understand you correctly that you said it's to you, improv has become easier to do with people yeah. that you do not know? It's not easier than with people whom you do know. That's not what I'm saying. But the fact that you're uncomfortable with knowing uh, of not knowing whatever the hell is going to happen you, at first you you only want to go there uh, if you trust the people around you yeah. and uh, it's a safe enough place to try and people won't find it ridiculous or your feelings of uncomfort that you're, yes. you're able to show that um, but you get more at least I get more comfortable uh, with being um, uncomfortable with other people Yes, yes, and I think you learn to trust yourself more. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, you, you, you don't trust yourself trying things that might come out wrong, um, and, and you need an environment that gives you this trust. Mm -hmm. Like the other people who are like, no, it's fine if you just try singing. We don't care if it's like way off key or anything. Yeah. That would be something that would terrify me. Um, you have these other people that give you this trust that you might not have in yourself. Mm -hmm. And if you've experienced that a couple of times, you start trusting yourself. Mm -hmm. You know That's that right. even if it turns out to not be to your liking, um, it's, it's going to be fine. And then you trust yourself, you know, running an experiment also in, a, in, a, in an environment where you're not so sure if it's actually safe. Mm -hmm. And actually, if it's even a little bit not safe enough to try, it still will be safe enough to try for yourself because you've yes. get, you have so much more trust in yourself. Yeah. So I, I guess improv is, is, is a great way of uh, working on, your, uh, on trusting yourself mm -hmm. and, yeah. and trusting others, trusting the situation. It's like, whatever happens, something will come of it. Yeah, yeah. And also there, I mean, uh, some scenes totally suck. <laughs> And All right. Most experiments fail. That's fine. Fail. I mean, yeah, we we yeah. tried. I mean, uh, okay, this doesn't work out. Okay, sure. And and maybe think about why. Um, but sometimes it just doesn't, and and that's mm -hmm. fine as well. Yeah. Yeah, but you never would have found out if you hadn't tried. Exactly. There, there maybe still would be this thought of, yeah, but what if she would what have? If? Yeah. What? What? If? What, what if? And and let's 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 find out. Yeah. In German, there's a, like, it, it's, it's a pun. It says, um, wo kämen wir hin, uh, wenn, wenn alle immer nur sagten, wo kämen wir hin und keiner ginge, um zu schauen, wohin wir kämen, wenn wir gingen. So, uh, where would we end up if everybody just always said, where would we end up? And nobody actually went to go and yeah. see where we would end up if we went. Yeah. So... It takes courage uh, and it takes trust, but um, learning that something does not work is also learning. I, I don't know, was it Edison with the, with the light bulb? Mm -hmm. He said, I, I haven't failed, I've just found 200 ways in which it doesn't work. Uh -huh. Or is something along those lines, someone Google this, yeah, this yeah, quote. Yeah, yeah. But it's, I think it was Edison who said that. And, and yeah, that, I think so too, yeah. Um, shows how much trust he had and how much he believed that he knew this would work. He knew the physics were right. He's like, I, I haven't found out how exactly yet. I, I have mm -hmm. the science. I don't have the engineering yet. But I know this will work. Yeah. And, and even if I fail 200 trying. times, I'll I keep trying. I know this will work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And keep trying 
I mean, not repeat the same experiment until it works, because that is that unlikely to... Then you'll be back at Einstein's quote of uh, repeating yeah, the... Yeah, definition of insanity yeah. is uh, repeating the same thing and thinking it'll lead to different outcomes. Yeah. Which, I mean, you said before that it's impossible to run the same experiment on the same team twice. On human behavior, yeah. Yeah, on human behavior, well, on human behavior in a certain situation. On human mm -hmm. behavior in general, it's very much possible, but in a certain situation with this particular person, impossible. Mm -hmm. And um, in that way, you could say, oh, well, it's not the same experiment I'm running because maybe if I run again, you know, um, you should tweak it. You should, you should yeah. tweak it in a, in a way that makes sense. And you should, should have, and that's back to the scientific definition of an experiment, you should have a theory why you're running an experiment. Exactly. Exactly. The don't just don't just turn any knobs. You know, just let's try something. You should have a theory of why you think something is going to improve if you change mm -hmm. this one thing. Yeah. Think about the why you want to improve it and why not to give it a try. And you know, don't let yeah, yourself be held back. Yeah. And why you believe back. this is going to amend the issue? Uh -huh. You know, it, it's easy to say. Um, yeah, we have this issue and maybe you do an analysis of five times why you end up with um, we do not have enough retrospectives so let's have a retrospective once a week mm. that could be something that came out of a, of a retrospective hypothetically um, and that is wonderful but then you should also ask the question okay can i make a theory of why i think this will solve our issue how are going? How are having more frequent retrospectives? How is that going to resolve our issue? Like going back the back up the ladder, you go down uh, five times Y, but then when you have your the thing you want to change, you should go back up and say, is this actually going to contribute? The theory to even makes sense because mm -hmm. yeah. uh, sometimes you come up with uh, something that sounds great. I'm always for having more retrospectives. I, I think it's very hard to have too many of them. Um, but it might not actually be, you, you might not hit bullseye. You might hit mm -hmm. something, but not bullseye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so I think that's important. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I also think, um, but um, when you said doing the, the five whys and yeah. you drill down, if, because if you don't, people always, and it's a human thing. You, you think in solutions right away. Okay. Yeah. So there's some sort of a problem. Okay. Let's try this and they'll fix it. Uh, yeah. Let's do that, that experiment without wondering even, okay, what, what can the, the, uh, the outcome be or what would be any side effects maybe even. Um, most people don't really think about that. Um, think about the whole picture, I mean, and I think uh, especially when doing five whys or some other drill down to get deeper to yeah. why are we actually um, going there and, and what is the the actual desired outcome that we want. The need, uh, I mean, not, yeah. not the uh, option that you try, but um, the desire. And to define the problem, you know, mm. um, a, a lot of, I've heard a lot um, that people say we want to be solution focused. Like, we don't want to just talk about the problem. We want to be solution focused. It's much more positive to be solution focused. And I'm like, yeah, but how can you come up with a solution if you haven't understood the problem? Not a problem. Yeah. And, and you should analyze the problem until you're sure you've drilled down to it. Because a lot of the dysfunctions that we see in teams are um, things that we see that might not be working as, as good as they could be. Mm -hmm. um, they are just a symptom. And, and, and the problem with, I'm coming up with scrum uh, analogies all the time, I apologize. Um, right. If you have dailies that run half an hour every day, that's longer than they should. And you could say, okay, let's just finish them uh, after 15 minutes. Let's set a timer and let's just hard stop and see what happens. You could run that as an experiment. But then I would ask, well, but why, what is it that we're discussing? Like, are we talk, just chatting and, you know, t talking about your dog and what you had for, for, for lunch yesterday? Or is there a, a deeper reason why mm -hmm. we have this symptom? And it's usually yeah. a symptom of the whole system. 
and and that's uh, where coming up with experiments gets really hard. If mm -hmm. you notice that, um, yeah, we have communication issues. We do not communicate enough, and that's why our meetings, once we have some, they always run long because everybody wants to discuss everything. Mm -hmm. And you sit there and you're like, man, that's an issue in like the entire company. And I can, I as a coach of this one team, I cannot solve the whole company. <laughs> And then to find an experiment that has a chance of improving the situation for the people you do have an impact on okay. can be hard. I mean, it's okay if it fails, but it should lead us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And then to run an experiment for, for a whole organization is way more difficult than to run one with just a couple of people, like in a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also I think... I mean, depending on uh, how the organization is set up, some things will work for one team and not for the others or yeah. not for the whole company, um, depending on uh, where the dysfunction lies, of course. Uh, but yeah, but mostly uh, in my, uh, my experience, the, the thing with meetings is uh, preparation and not exactly knowing what the hell are we going to uh, what Why the outcome of our meeting will be. Why am I here? What is my contribution? Yeah. Um, and we're just, you know, afraid that we'll step on somebody's toe uh, once we don't invite him. Yeah, yes. Is, uh, and you think if you're invited, you have to show up. Yeah. So I'm invited, I have to be there. And that is, that is a cultural thing, I guess. If I, uh, if I have no part in the meeting, I'm not coming. Yes, but that is a cultural thing mm. that you are probably very conscious about a lot yeah, of people I am, are conscious I now i mean yeah. i wasn't like i don't know how many years ago you know you're just supposed to go to meetings so you go to meetings but yeah. up until the point where you get into more in the efficiency mode and you know you kind of learn these things of uh why am i here and and what is the outcome of a good meeting i mean meetings can be wonderful Most yes people dread meetings because uh, they have no clue what the purpose of the meeting is. But once you have a clear purpose, I kind of like meetings. Yes. <laughs> Just say, okay, we do this, we do this, we do yeah. this, we can work. It can be a very that. efficient way of, of, of changing things. Yeah. yeah, efficient and effective at the same time, which is a, a wonderful uh, uh, joint pact if you can, uh, if you can have both. It's yeah. Really yeah, but you need, you, as anything, you need, need to do it right. You need to yeah, do yeah. the right things right also. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. You, you've coached a bunch of, uh, I've got to say, larger organizations. Like you're not just a team coach that works with like five pe people. And I don't mm -hmm. want to belittle anyone who works with just five people. That is, that no, is very cool. No, it's equally but important. But I'm not it is. That. But you've worked with organizations like on a, on a higher up level where you work with the, the organization and not uh, on a team level. How do you mm -hmm. run experiments on an organizational level? Um, that's more of in, in the setup and more about uh, how you deal with uh, leadership and teams and, and distribution of that. Uh, so how do you, as an organization, suit yourself towards the need of an organization? Which teams are a part of the organization and individuals are a part of the team? Um, so it's, it's like you have these multiple tiers um and you do different stuff on on different levels uh but you go back to the to the same principles uh like empiricism okay how can we measure um uh the outcome uh, we need to know the outcome first uh so the empiricism is there uh the effectiveness um are the principles that you want to steer on and you do that in a general level but the things that you that you actually do um besides meetings because i think it's a general thing um but there there's other stuff that you do uh on other levels i mean it's also when you coach a team or when you coach an individual it's also different you know some oh yeah absolutely, absolutely are similar but you do you know you act differently or you try different experiments and it's the same if you go on an organizational level but then it has to do more with delegation, uh, leadership position, um, autonomy, uh, and, and how you deal with that. Have you found it hard? Experiments yeah. is very hard, I think, for most leadership uh, people in leadership positions, I must say. 
um, it's a bit of a um, uh, yeah yeah we should do <laughs> we should do that uh, but actually doing it is very hard. It's not safe enough to fail. Um, I mean, there's, yeah, but, there's I mean, faces to be lost in, in, in yeah, experiments. Faces to be lost, and and for some and people, I mean, um, there's bonus systems and uh, whatever other dysfunctions there are in uh, appointing uh, people to some sort of a function, um, which is a different thing altogether. But it's very true, and um, yeah, the, there's no bonus for um, um, for trying. Your, your teams more autonomous or whatever because if there would be there would be so much more ground that you'll be able to cover um, mm -hmm. but yeah there, and, you know, uh, it can also be dangerous to the business fundamentally if you're if you're a large organization and you run an experiment on an organizational level uh, let's say um, you're introducing some sort of scaled scrum or scaled agile framework mm -hmm. one or the other um and and part of it will fail because it is a learning organization yeah but you won't go big bang i mean no you also, but but there is a fear it's a sort of a control group you try smaller first uh see what what happens um and to sort of uh, get your blind spots more uh, more out in the open yeah um so expanding of the comfort zone and knowing more okay this is the area that i'm uh, that i'm working in um, yes, but it's it's hard to get the harder to get the buy-in of the leadership if if there's bigger parts of the organization that your experiment could have an impact on or no. Yeah, yeah, uh, depending on the the current dysfunction of the organization, I'd say, because sometimes it is valuable to uh, to put yourself out there as an organization and uh, and see what happens because the loss of not trying uh, can be even greater. Uh, yeah. But it depends on the dysfunction of the organization yeah yeah the courage and and the trust that i mean it it, it keeps going back to these it, it's it's do do they whoever gets to decide whether to keep you as a coach for the organization or not um do they trust their own organization to make this work to really try the experiment and to really change something or do they not kind of not trust either the idea of the experiment as in i don't think this will work because i think your theory is wrong or do they not trust the people in their organization to actually do things that way mm, for example uh, self-organization it's like yeah that I, is a I great think, theory but yeah, our, the yeah. people here cannot do this no i think um, i wouldn't say there is a, a, a lack of trust um, but the trust is not explicit, so the, there's it's a, as if it weren't there. Yeah, so it's not. Let, uh, no, we don't trust uh, the teams or the leadership, or no, it's not that. It's more like, okay, yes, this might work, but and then there's this whole uncomfortable feeling, like, okay, can we trust our own people to? really pick this up and then be more hesitant about that, which is different than saying, no, we don't trust them, uh, which yeah, is- Yeah, but if you don't express case, trust, yeah. if, you, if you've never expressed trust, then to the other party, it, it will be the same as if there was no trust. Um, people don't, yes, don't, and, most people and, don't go around assuming that, oh yeah, everybody trusts me, you know, <laughs> especially yeah, my, yeah. my bosses, so, they all trust me. That's not what I've seen in most organizations. Uh -huh. So it's, yeah, it's and very I important. I think on on a on a on a more broader scale, then it it kind of ties back to um, um, the thing that we discussed about the improvisation uh, gets back to again. Like, okay, um, try safe safe to fail experiments, uh, and also as a coach, know where your quick wins are. Um, say, uh, you know, um, make them be felt as experiments as well and for some people they are mm -hmm. they say okay yes oh oh this actually was a success we we didn't expect that uh, and also explicitly let some of the things fail which don't have a, a huge impact or, or a very, very negative negative effect so okay you know sometimes you fail and sometimes uh, you succeed 
um, but the most value is in okay what, what is the intended outcome and let's have that clear and so we can as an organization um, collaboratively uh, work on the same goal uh, and I think that's the that's the key point. It, there's not so much in the change itself than um, having the people on board of understanding what this change, um, why we want this change, why, why do these things need to happen. Um, there's more value in that than the actual experiment itself or the outcome of it. Yeah, I was just thinking that um, there's a lot of value in a failed experiment. Um, for example, coming back to the uh, extended daily story that I was telling earlier, mm -hmm. um, I think there is value because now we can talk about a dysfunction in the team. It's come to light that yeah. obviously you do not own your own experiments. And why is that? I, I was doubtful whether uh, it would work. I mean, I know them uh, a bit. Um, but I, I couldn't have told them like, guys, you're never going to do that. That doesn't work because they believe they would. And now that we have evidence that, should, hey, yeah. it, did, it didn't work. So let's talk about why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. There is a lot, to be, a lot to be learned in failure. And actually, yeah. this is something that is, uh, I've learned first in sports, but it's, I guess, true for everything. That you learn more from failure than from success. Yeah. So if you're, yeah, especially if you with lose. failures, um, try a different experiment for the same outcome as soon as you can. It's like getting back in the saddle again once you drop off a horse. Yes, I and mean, you know exactly why you failed. Yeah. Usually. You, can, you can put your finger on something and say, like, this did not work because yeah. if something works out fine and, 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 and you, whatever, win a championship or uh, mm -hmm. your experiment is, is a success, you don't know why. Mm -hmm. It, it could have been, yeah, it could have been be just a one-off. <laughs> yeah, it could have been a one-off. Um, could have been some sort of um, side impact that you weren't aware of yeah. that made your experiment look really great. Um, mm -hmm. That wasn't even down to your the, the thing that you had been working on. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think if you if you really put the focus on we want to learn more, yeah. you should be welcoming failure. Yeah, and that is that is a cultural thing that is in Europe much less accepted than, for example, in the US. Mm -hmm. And, and that, I don't know if it makes it harder to run these uh, experiment-based um, changes here in Europe, where failure essentially is, is something to be ashamed of and, and you can never admit that you failed once in your life, whereas in the US, it's like, hey, you tried, that's awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it, it's a bit of uh, the negative connotation that we have with uh, with failure. I yes. mean, the word in itself isn't very positive, and therefore I like, you know, the, the fail fast. I like to go more into experiment more. Yes, uh, yes. The, I mean, the word I think the word yes, tends also, to be. I think the word failure tends to have a different connotation. Yeah. Depending on the culture you live in, um, so if you're in the U.S. Failure isn't, you know, something terrible that destroys your life, maybe. Mm -hmm. It's something that didn't work. Okay, so we learned mm -hmm. that. Um, and, and American people will correct me at this point. Um, whereas to, to, to me, as someone who grew up in Europe, um, failure is, is, is like the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. Like you cannot fail. You gotta, you, gotta, you gotta, you know, and if you did, you gotta, you gotta gloss over it and kind of make it look good so that yeah. you don't have to admit you, you failed. Uh -huh. um, and and so I think picking your words wisely and being aware of the cultural context in which yeah, you're working definitely. is yeah. is very valuable. Yeah. And, and it it also goes back to the to the safe environment. I think so yes, make but it safe to, enough to, to try to be to be aware of that. Maybe even from organization to organization, you know, not just saying oh this is a Western culture and this is mm -hmm. an Eastern culture thing. There are huge differences. But also in Western cultures, there are huge differences, and, and in organizations, there are huge differences in culture. No, I think um, it has to do with the, your organizational DNA. Um, yeah, and, and to be aware of what is the, the culture of this organization, what is my feeling of what is safe here, and mm -hmm. what does yeah. failure mean to this organization, what does an experiment mean to an organization. To some people, 
experiment. The word can imply learning, um, but to some people it, it, it means um, you're doing something where you have no idea what you're doing. And mm -hmm. we're professionals here, we only do things that we know exactly what we're doing. Yeah. So what, yeah. what are you doing coming here to run an experiment? I thought I hired a professional. Yeah. Uh, so it's, yeah. I think even if um, the, the, the thing that you're doing remains the same, mm -hmm. we would call it an experiment. Sometimes you might need to find different words to not scare off people. Yeah. So that they don't think you will blow up their organization by just, you know, I just, I don't actually know what I'm doing. I'm just coming here and trying a few things and maybe they work yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, by the way, here's my daily rate. I have no clue. Let's do an experiment. Yeah, no. Yes, yes. That, yeah. that can be, I guess that can be understood in, in a very wrong way. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm I'm pretty curious about what other people think about experiments. So I've I've posted a question in our uh, Slack uh, group, the Agile mm -hmm. Coaching Group uh, Slack, and to see what kind of a connotation that people have with experiments, and and some mm -hmm. um, have it like, yeah, I want to validate the unknown, um, and others also have, yeah, experiments, yeah, it's like, uh, okay, do this kind of weird stuff. <laughs> like science experiments and yeah this blow up shit hocus pocus uh, weird stuff <laughs> you know there's all sorts of different associations that that people have that and i mean that's in a in an agile coaching uh group uh, yep. where we are sort of uh aligned and you know it's our no. business so um uh, but even then it's different which is uh i find it very yeah. interesting very intriguing yeah it's, 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 say just, you know you can just experiment you know you have to uh give some context to the meaning yeah even in, even in a, in a group where you would have assumed that oh yeah we're talking experiments and these are agile coaches so i'm assuming we all you know we understand the same thing uh -huh. and that is absolutely not true as your as your experiment in the slack uh -huh. channel showed <laughs> yeah you got you got many different answers yeah yeah, yeah. I thought it was so uh, so if any of, of the people watching or listening want to uh let us know about their ideas about um the about their views on experiments or other things um i think comment down below or add us on twitter um, yeah and, and or record know. something yourself because i'm also quite interested on actual experiments uh that people have uh have tried or have yeah. filled at or uh i don't know yeah don't what, just what, hide behind the keyboard for the learnings yeah for you know people feel comfortable with it uh, i mean there is so much um in in storytelling and uh what you can learn of, of each other uh just by hearing each other's stories and and I don't know, it also broadens your horizon, at least for me it does, when, when hearing other people talk um, within our community, but also beyond. I mean, I think it's very interesting to hear about um, people working in, uh, in different sectors than, uh, than agile coaches. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. So I'm very curious <laughs> what other people have to say about experiments or other stuff as well. Yeah, I think those are great parting words, no? Um, yeah, I think so. All right then, so have a great time. Until the next time. Thanks for chatting, Katrine. <laughs> Bye, Kitty. All right. Bye, guys and girls.